Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Lanolin, and we are back with episode 40 of my modded Minecraft Let's Play series. So, in this episode, we're going to hook up all of these systems we have down here. Currently, we have a whole lot of wool and ingots and... What the... There we go. A whole bunch of wool, a whole bunch of ingots. Uh, and I'd like to connect them up to our brand new applied energistic system. Um, geez, we have a lot of copper. <laughs> Not too much of anything else, which kind of sucks. Nice amount of wool. Oh, I have a lot of pink wool. I think I have more pink wool than anything. How did that even happen? <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah. So, this episode, we're going to connect this stuff up, which is actually going to be pretty easy. Pretty easy indeed. Uh, the only thing we really need are a bunch of uh, Fluix cables. And... We're going to need what's called a storage bus. Now, storage buses are interesting Interesting in that they kind of allow you to connect uh, your applied energistic system up to pretty much any sort of... Anything that has an inventory, basically. That has some sort of... Uh, you can keep items in it, anything. Barrels, chests, you know. Drawers, in this case. It's pretty neat. Uh, so where are they at? We need a... Where are they? Storage bus. There we go. They're pretty simple to make. Sticky piston, regular piston, and an interface. Let's that switch. There we go. Interface is also pretty easy. Just some glass, annihilation core, formation core, boom. Uh, and I actually think we're going to need a couple of these. So one. Oh, man. Uh, formation core. Oh, I should have that. Nice. Let me toss that back in there. Let's make another interface. What? Oh my goodness. Alright, well, two is fine for now. Are we actually out of iron? Do I need to go and... Do I need to go mining for real? There we go. Let's get a couple of those guys in there. Yep, I need to go get some more iron. Well, I'll worry about that in a little bit. For now, let's go ahead and take, take care of this. So now that we have these M ME interfaces, let's grab some pistons. Um... Two of these guys needed to be sticky pistons, so let's go ahead and do that. Bink. Nice. Alright, let's toss all that stuff in there. Clear this guy out. Uh, in the future, I'll get a little bit faster doing this, but you know, for now, I'm super slow. Bam! Limitless potential. And it's pretty serious when it means limitless potential. These storage buses really allow um, allow you to interface with just about any block from just about any mod. <clears throat> uh, so we actually need to start up here, I think. Um, currently, our system is mostly up here. Uh, so, oh, there you are. I was wondering where this sound was coming from. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, we have our cable right there. And if we want to connect all of our other, other stuff up to the system, we obviously need to run that cable. Ow. Oh yeah, I hope you like the uh, the floor. I forgot I changed that. <laughs> I couldn't really find any other types of wood uh, that really looked as nice as the great wood planks, so I just kind of did like a half and half thing. I think this looks okay. If you have any other ideas, feel free to toss them out there. Uh, but yeah, I, I've already actually done a little bit of the mapping out as far as where we need to go. But what we're going to do is run this glass cable down here. And again, I mean, thankfully this stuff isn't too terribly expensive, so it's all good to kind of go a little crazy. All right, so our first destination is actually right here at this storage, or this drawer controller. Now, this drawer controller is what is hooked up to our wool. As you can see back there, you can kind of see the back of the the, uh, the wool drawers. Yeah, there you go. You can see cyan wool, spruce drawer. So, yeah, this guy's connected to that drawer uh, set. So, we're going to toss this ME storage bus onto that guy. Make a little space. We're going to connect it down like that. Nice. Now, this isn't going to pull or push or anything like that. It's not going to try and take anything out of this drawer, out of the uh, the drawers, and it's also not going to try and push anything in. That we'll, we'll, we will discuss once we, uh, the specifics of that we'll talk about once we actually, like, 
start messing around with it. But for now, let's hook this stuff up. All right, so we're coming up here. We're going to hook up our ingots. Here is the drawer controller. Let's put the bus on there. What are you doing? Uh, this isn't actually going to connect or anything. It's not going to interfere. It's just a visual thing uh, because it's a block. So, yeah, you can just disable it. Uh, see, doing it again. There we go. Let's run this down here. Nice. Um, pretty sure I can get out of here at it as an Ender Mini. Nice. Aha. Ah, oh, crap. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, that's why I did this. <laughs> I can cover this up now. All right, let's get back upstairs. Okay, so now that we have all this stuff connected, we should have access to our wool. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Isn't that freaking cool? And, of course, we have access to all of... Uh, I don't like how it shows them as nuggets. I kind of rather have them as ingots. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'll look into how I can kind of adjust that, because I would rather see these as ingots rather than uh, as nuggets. That's kind of weird. But maybe that's something that we can worry about in the future. So yeah, there you go. We can see all of our items. All of our ingots are here. All that fun stuff. Although I guess maybe it's showing it as ingots. Okay, yeah. So there, yeah, there you go. There's the copper ingots. And then here's those same copper ingots as nuggets. Keeping in mind that the, the um, compacting drawers allow you to do that. So there you go. I mean, it's, it's as easy as that. Like I, I dedicated an entire episode to this. <laughs> but I did a lot of the time-consuming work off camera, which would have been digging holes and stuff, but that's okay. That makes us have a little bit more time for more cool things. But yeah, uh, we I want to do that um, way down here for uh, the coal and wood, or not coal, the wood and all that fun stuff. And of course, I want. I don't know why I didn't take the luminizers. I forgot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to hook all this stuff up too, the carrots and potatoes and all that fun stuff. But again, for right now, it's, it's a little bit too far of a distance. I don't really have the resources to uh, do that. But, I mean, but it would be really, really easy. I would more than likely create another storage drawer controller and then just hook it up from here and go all the way down. Oh, I got some treasure. Oh, that was terrible. Terrible treasure. All right, so let's hop back down here. But yeah, it's a little bit far away. It's not too far away, but it's far enough away that I'm probably going to hold off on doing that until I have a, a quarry running, which is what we're going to actually work on for the rest of the episode. As I mentioned in the previous episodes, uh, we have a massive excess of experience, um, which reminds me, by the way, one of the many times that creepers have creeped into my base and blown up my stuff, uh, I guess at one point my XP obelisk was destroyed. Which sucks, because there was like 50 levels in there. Uh, so yeah. That's also why I'm walking around with 16 levels of experience on me. This thing is to the brim full of experience. I mean, I've got XP in here. I even have XP in the freaking sewer. <laughs> and the drain itself is completely full. So we need to start making these books. Now, if you have forgotten, our goal for the last few episodes has been to create all the necessary systems required to create ourselves an inner quarry. Because the Ender Quarry requires some fairly specific things from extra utilities. Uh, more specifically, the Ender Cores. Uh, everything else is fairly straightforward to get, just kind of resource intensive. So if you know, you're know you short on resources, obviously it's going to be difficult to create this stuff. Uh, but the, the big one, the difficult one, is actually the Ender Cores. Because you require this magical wood, which requires enchanted books. Well, I only have four enchanted books. <laughs> so... You know, as if you remember, we that's why we set this up to create these da, 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 magical wood. And we now finally have a nice excess amount of XP that we should be able to complete all the necessary ender cores or magical wood that we need in one episode. We should be able to. So let's get to it. Um, the first thing I'm actually going to go ahead and make that's going to help immensely with this is called the filing cabinet. Filing cap. There we go. Nice. Not the fancy one. I just need the regular one. Can I make it? Ugh. I need iron. All right. We are going to have to enlist the help of our good friend. You don't have an EMC value, do you? Aww. I wish it did. 
Actually, if it did, I probably wouldn't have nearly as much copper. <laughs> what has a nice EMC value that I can kind of dump? I don't really want to keep dumping my... I've been dumping my uh, uh, Ender Pearls lately. So I've had kind of a nice amount extra. I guess I'll use a block of gold. Why not? So yeah, gotta love transmutation tablet. I hope to kind of, again, as I say it every single time, kind of draw away from the uh, transmutation tablet. Well, I don't need that much. Actually, maybe I do. There you go. That's good. Again, I'm trying to kind of move away from the transportation tablet, but I will say it is a absolute miracle to have as a YouTuber. Because <laughs> I don't have to go mining for freaking 45 minutes after every episode. Uh, but anyway, uh, what were we making? Oh, yeah, the filing cabinet. Woot! Filing cabinet. So the filing cabinet is a very interesting block, uh, or block. Um, I mean, I guess it is technically a block, but it's cool. It's added by extra utilities, and it, it kind of helps deal with this crap, all this non-stacking BS, what you can do. Now, keep in mind, you can only have one type of item in here. This only holds one type. However, it can stack all the various different types. So if you have a bunch of enchants, for example, with the same enchants, they will stack them. Do I have any with the same? I don't really think I do. Oh, let's see. Let's toss them in here. Oh, these are gold. Oh, these are all leather. But yeah, as you can see, I mean, the only one type can go in there. But if they have the same enchants, they will stack. So that's going to be kind of helpful here once we start working on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this crap. Oh, actually, I want to test something. I wonder if I can pick up the filing cabinet with... Whoops. Oh, I'm not going to be able to put all that in there anyway. All right, whatever. Never mind. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pick all this stuff up. I'm, we're going to run downstairs with it. Uh, oh, you're not going to go through the elevator, huh? Dang. Well, we're going to do this. Whee! <laughs> all right. We're going to run down here with this stuff. Dude, I love the Batania magnet, man. You can do all sorts of... Oh, see how... Like, okay. So this kind of gives you an idea of when this thing... Man, I wish this thing had a farther range, dude. It's so... It has such a tiny range. Well, I guess it's not sucking it up now. Well, anyway, um, I need I need that chest. The uh, the filing cabinet will be useful, but it won't be useful uh, for a few minutes still. So yeah, toss all this stuff in here, la di da. So what I'm going to do actually, the first thing I'm going to do is utilize all of this crap because we don't need all this enchanted junk. We're not going to use any of it at all ever because we have our awesome Batania armor, which I hope to upgrade here actually kind of soon. You know, you can enchant this stuff. I'm pretty sure you can enchant it. Let's find out. Let's enchant my chest plate. Oh, you can. Woo. Let's see what we get. I mean, we have a whole bunch, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, so while that's actually going, what I'm going to do is go upstairs and make a bunch of books. And I'm going to disenchant all of this crap. Disenchant it all and put it onto books. That way, we don't need to necessarily use this liquid XP yet. Actually, with that, I mean, we, I guess we wouldn't really need too much. We might actually have enough books use, utilizing all of this stuff. We'll see. Wow, that's going to take a very, very, very long time. Well, not very, 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 but fairly long. So, anyway, I'm going to go make some books and I will be right back. So, I made my books pretty straightforward, and I actually wanted to point out I made the uh, additional storage cells like I said I would <laughs> and I still just actually barely had enough types like this guy's sitting at 62 of 63 so this guy even though he's green he might as well be orange or yellow whatever you want to call it because it's you know, it's only one away so this guy yeah so keep that in mind if you decide to start a um, applied logistics system kind of in towards the mid game uh, you might need to make an extra, extra, extra amount of storage cells. And, oh, yeah, I forgot to point out. And, uh, I'm sure you noticed, but I forgot to say something about it. My little design for the terminal. Isn't that awesome? It's, I mean, obviously, it's done just like with the um, the facades. And then you just kind of put it around it. And then I did some nice carpenter wedge slopes around the top. I think it looks freaking awesome. It's kind of mismatched, but I think it kind of works. I like it. So anyway, let's run back downstairs. Oh yeah, I can fix this now. <laughs> it was convenient, but you know. So let's run back downstairs and see if this is done. Ooh, it is. What did we get? We got Thorns 2 Soulbound. Ooh, in Protection 4. I like Soulbound items. 
I didn't realize how much I like Soulbound items until I played uh, Vanished. And then I realized that Soulbound items are the greatest thing. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar with the, what Soulbound means, it means it's bound to you, your person, to your soul, to your very being. That means when you die, it will stay on you. Isn't that freaking cool? It's one of those enchants that you just want to put on everything. <laughs> Especially if you die a whole bunch. So... What I'm going to do actually is, while we're in disenchanting all these drawers or items, I'm going to actually enchant all my armor. Because, again, we have a whole crap ton of experience and a big experience farm. So, you know, why not? Why not? How are you doing? All right, so you've emptied out. So I'm going to let you start dumping in. I'm going to start dumping my own XP. Um, oh, actually, we should actually get this process going. This process also takes a hot second. Um, now, when I originally explained the repeat process, I thought it meant that it would re continuously enchant uh, something again and again. That No, that makes no sense. That's definitely not what it does. Repeat means that if it has multiple enchants on it, it'll continue to pull all of those enchants off. It'll enchant, it'll disenchant, it'll take off the first thing, and then the second enchant, and then the third, third enchant, etc. Kind of like this. It would take off projectile pr protection first, then unbreaking, then soulbound, then last stand. Ooh, I actually think... I might take last stand for myself because I wouldn't mind having last stand. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with last stand, uh, the way it works is if you have a whole bunch of experience points, um, rather than dying on your last hit, it'll eat experience. That way, you know, it's kind of like your last stand buff. Like, I can't die! Not till I run out of experience points and then you die. So these leather pants are now garbage. But we have projectile protection 2 on a book. Hell yeah! So what I'm going to do is take these filing cabinets and put the books in the filing cabinet because we will have a large excess of books. And as we come across enchants that, that are the same, they should stack. So here we go. Enchanting, disenchanting more stuff. And we can line that guy up and get him ready to be disenchanted. Hell yeah. So actually, I guess I can just toss all the uh, soulbound stuff in there. Oh, that's done. Take him out. There it goes. Nice. Um, now we can hook this up, actually. Actually, let me run upstairs and get something. We want to actually make sure that this guy keeps going. So what I'm going to do is grab an Ender I.O. conduit. Not a fluid conduit. Um, here we go. It, the, only th the only gripe that I have with the search bar is that it doesn't... When I type in Applied Energistics... It comes up over here in NEI. I, I wish it would show all of my applied energistic stuff over here in apply in um in the screen as well. That'd be nice. Like when I type in anything, like uh, Ender IO, for example, it'd be so awesome if it showed up with all the Ender IO stuff right here. <laughs> but it doesn't. No big deal though. Uh, so what did I need? I needed a item conduit. Oh, nice. I only have a handful. All I need is a handful. And a chest, please. Thank you. Now, I could do this so I don't have to, like, touch it at all. And actually, I guess I might as well do that. So I'm going to do this to that, and then this to right there. Oh, wait, no. Right there. Uh, I'm going to set you to auto output. I'm going to set you to auto output. Set you to input. You jerk. Uh, just insert, please. Now, I'm hoping that this... Yeah, there we go. So, it tossed the sword in there. Oh, but you're not taking out the leather pants or the book. Hmm. Uh, maybe you can only extract from the booty. Which means you need to be a little bit closer, please. Alright, let's put you there. Put you there. And then extract, always active, and insert. There we go. Nice. So it's going to pull out the stuff when it's complete, and then this is going to go. So now we don't actually have to touch this at all. We can let this just continue to go and go and go. This guy is going to disenchant all my stuff, take the books and toss them in here, and, of course, also take the, uh, the pants and stuff and toss them in there. Um... There is actually a way to make it so it only takes the books and sends the pants somewhere else. But we don't really need to do that right now, and we'd have to kind of change it around for everything else. Uh, so, eh. Just something that, you know, if you wanted to do, you can go ahead and do. Kind of nifty. 
Are you done? Oh, nice. We got respiration three, so wheat, and thorns two. So respiration allows us to breathe underwater, and thorns, you know, people take damage when they attack us. Uh, Man of steel leggings, and go. Woot. You're empty, right? All right. Nice. This is so cool. See, again, this is why I went ahead and set up, made this little setup, because I knew that we would be doing some work that we definitely need. Oh, why did it take that out? Oh, I don't have it on repeat. All right, so I'll put it on repeat so we can go ahead and do that. I, I wasn't even thinking. It's too bad none of these bows had infinity on them. That would have been nice. I may have actually made a... I may have uh, made a different bow. If it would have had infinity, that would have been really cool. You're off, right? All right. There was one time I accidentally left this on. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, my engines weren't happy. Actually, they should be running right now. Pretty... Pretty hardcore, actually. Yeah, there we go. Nice. See, now we can actually see, like, an accurate representation of how much this stuff is using. Actually, that is kind of strange that it's giving us an accurate number now. I wonder why it didn't give us an accurate number when we use these guys. They don't use that much power. It's just they use a nice chunk of power uh, in the early game. I'd say they probably use 200 RF a tick, maybe maybe more, maybe f between two and 400 RF a tick altogether. Because I think they do about 100 to 150 each. Not 100%. So how are we doing? Nice. Uh, Vorpal, by the way, if you didn't know, um, is the beheading enchant, which I still haven't got a beheading or a uh, Enderman head from Ender.io yet to make what I want to make. Nice. So let me toss these books. Now, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can actually pipe into uh, the filing cabinet. I just don't have any more item conduits, unfortunately. Respiration, last stand, blast protection. I also don't think it matters what you have last stand on. I I'm not totally sure on the specifics of last stand. So, yeah. So, while this is going, we are going to take the books that we have and... Actually, what do I want to keep? I don't care about disjunction. I'm going to go ahead and keep last stand. I'll keep soulbound and everything else. I don't really care. Um, the dis disjunction enchant from blue power makes it so Enderman can't teleport away. Ooh, it's done. I got Flim Flam. Wow. So Flim Flam is actually a really, 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 really powerful enchant. Um, I'm not sure how much it does to mobs. But Flim Flam is interesting. It causes very crazy effects to happen to people that attack you. Most of them are pretty awful. Uh, if you attack somebody with Flim Flam, you will have a bad time. It's very interesting that I got Flim Flam. I'm not really sure how that's going to affect uh, neutral mobs or any type of mob that's not a player. I'm not really sure. Uh, so anyway, because some of the effects are kind of not really annoying unless you're a player. But anyway, let's make some of this magical wood. Let's spell it correctly. So magical wood. Here we go. A uh, bunch of gold, bookshelf. So actually, let's make a bookshelf. Actually, let's make even more books. Uh, more paper, please. Dude, you gotta love applied energistics. See how nice this is? Rather than, like, digging from chest to chest to chest to chest. Ugh. Now I can actually sit here and craft stuff with you guys. Oh, we need one more book. Did the wrong recipe. Actually, just give me a whole bunch of books. Guys, do a stack. Okay, cool. I always forget whether or not it'll do as many as it can make, or just a stack. I guess it'll just do a stack, which is good. What? Right, that's good for now. Now, I'm pretty sure any eye still has the issue where uh, uh, it doesn't like to do stacked stuff, which kind of sucks, but okay. Or not stuff. Stuff that doesn't stack, it won't place into the crafting grid for you, which kind of blows, but whatever. Or maybe I'm out of wood. Or I'm gold, I mean. And bookshelf. There we go. Nice, it gives us four. Now, 
I don't know if this has been changed, but the last time that I played around with magical wood, it would give you a magical wood based... It, it, the amount of magical wood that it would give you would be based on the type of enchants, like the strength or power of the enchants that you were doing. We only got four magical wood, but we seem to have like fairly decent enchants, so that may have been something that was changed uh, just in favor of... Uh, nope, never mind. It was not changed. So we only got two for this, for crappy fire protection, power... Some enchant that it probably doesn't recognize, and a disjunction, and projectile projection one. So these are really crap enchants. So we only got two magical wood. That right there, that mechanic right there, is why I wanted to have so much XP. Just in case we kind of got unlucky. Because that was a lot of resources to burn to only get two freaking pieces of magical wood. That kind of that kind of sucks. And yeah, the ender quarry, we need at least eight for the base. And then I want to make the world hole upgrade, which I guess we don't, we need to make the QED. What do I need to make the QED? The, uh, the quantum entanglement diviner. I wonder if that's actually what it means or what it stands for. Because uh, if, you, if you mouse over the QED a bunch of times, sometimes its name will change because people are funny. Diamond Edge Computational Matrix. No, I guess I don't need... Cool. Some of the stuff that we're going to make with the Ender Quarry requires we use this special... Oh, there we go. Quantum Ender Device. It changed its name again. But yeah, some of, the, some of the stuff that we're going to make is going to require the QED. But we'll go into that once we get to that point. For now, we're just going to continue working on creating more magical wood. Oh, wow. That... You're not... You're fairly quick when you want to be. Are you done? Not even close. Oh, you're out of essence. Whoops. Let's take these out here. Oh, yeah. I want to keep Soulbound and Last Stand. I'll keep the other Last Stand. See? It stacks. See? I, see, I, see, I, see, I, see, I told you. I told you. <laughs> I just kept not getting the right stuff. So it would stack. Ooh, another Soulbound. Okay. Again, I'm going to hold on to these just because I want to see if I can do, like, Last Stand 2. Uh, I don't know. I might be able to. And then these dudes. Unstable too. Okay, I don't actually know what that does, so I'm going to hold on to that. Oh, crap. Are you good? You're not, like, overflowing or anything? A little bit. Okay, a lot of bit. Okay, I let it overflow a whole bunch. Whoops. <laughs> oh, I'm going to move and let it fill up. Whoops. All right, that stuff should drain down into that drain, but hopefully I didn't. Hopefully I didn't screw it up. But anyway, as we were, a little bit of a long episode, but hey, we're getting some progress done on this freaking Ender Quarry. I've been talking about making this Ender Quarry for how many episodes now? Too many, way too many. So how many are we gonna get? Oh, six! Holy, sh that's a lot. Withering, projectile protection, blast protection, protection too. So yeah, as you can see, there's a kind of high level enchants. Or rather, stronger versions of these enchants. And of course, withering is kind of rare in, its, in, an, in and of itself. So six. Nice. That's actually enough. We can actually make this ender quarry now. Hell yeah. Um, but keep in mind, actually, that the block that you make... Wow, why are you doing this to me? This ender core that you make uh, can actually be used for multiple things. Oh, the filing cabinet. The advanced one is made out of magical wood as is the golden spike and the golden bag of holding that has reincarnating one. Ooh, I don't even know what that means. And you can smelt it in an alloy furnace to get gold and gets... That's kind of neat. Well, anyway, as I was saying, uh, this magical wood can be turned into, of course, the ender cores, which can be used uh, in place of in stone. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but if you don't have in stone and you make a bunch of those ender cores, you can actually plant the ender lily seeds on the in stone and it'll grow not as fast as in stone, but it'll grow faster than what it would on dirt. So, so that's nice. That's something to keep in mind. So hell yeah, that has been episode of 40, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we finally made this magical wood, which is going to let us work towards creating ourselves the awesome, the amazing, the incredible Ender Quarry. Oh yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. I have been Landlin. I hope you join me next episode where I think we're actually going to put the Ender Quarry together and see about finally 
finally automating the resource collection because I'm really tired of doing it myself. Oh, it's done. I got Unbreaking 3 and Fire Protection 4. Eh, that's kind of lame. But da -da -da, we have a whole bunch of nice enchants on our armor now, which is going to be, well, just generally a nice thing to have. <laughs> so again, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time. Bye.